Investigations on competition infringements are a complex art. Competition authorities must detect competition law violations, collect robust evidence to prove them, and justify the fines, which sometimes are extremely high. At the same time, they should follow a fair and transparent process. Let's go through the key steps of a fair and effective investigation. First, competition authorities must detect possible competition infringements. They can rely on both proactive and reactive detection tools. Reactive detection tools depends on information given to competition authorities by outside sources. Uh, a usual source of information are complaints by market players, public entities or consumers. For cartels, almost all competition regimes have introduced leniency programs that allow cartel members the opportunity to come forward, self-report their conduct and help the competition authority gather evidence in exchange for immunity or reduction of the fines. Another notable reactive detection tool is the whistleblower system, which allows informants that have not taken part in the illegal activity to provide information to the competition authority outside the context of a leniency application and of their personal capacity. Uh, there are sometimes rewards for whistleblowers. Reactive detection tools are fundamental, but should be complemented with proactive tools, which are based on efforts by competition authorities to identify possible breaches and start investigations on their own initiatives, ex officio. Without the proactive tools, a competition authority would run the risk of missing cases simply because no one reported them. The simplest proactive tool is market monitoring, which should focus on high priority sectors. Then there is data screening, which is becoming increasingly important in public procurement. Many competition authorities also have the power to perform structured market studies, which can provide a better understanding of a market and in some cases lead to enforcement. Finally, important insights can come from cooperation with other institutions, be they national bodies like sector regulators, anti-corruption bodies and public prosecutors, or foreign competition authorities. Once the competition authority has detected a possible infringement, it usually conducts an initial investigation to verify whether it is worth opening formal proceedings. In the affirmative, many authorities adopt an official opening decision, a document that summarizes the alleged anti-competitive conduct and the legal basis, details the expected time frame, and in some jurisdictions, indicates the name of the case manager. The competition authority may decide to carry out unannounced inspections, the so-called down rates. In this case, the opening decision is notified at the beginning of the inspection. Down rates are the most powerful, but also the most invasive tool to gather direct evidence of antitrust infringements, especially in the case of cartels. In the past, the smoking gun thought by competition officials during down rates were handwritten minutes of secret gatherings in which competitors agreed on prices or customer allocation. Now antitrust evidence is increasingly digitalized, which brings about additional challenges for the seizure, examination and storage of digital evidence. The most utilized investigative tools are requests for information, which can be addressed to the parties of the proceedings and to third parties. In order to obtain useful information, the request must include the right questions with the right language. To do so, the investigative staff needs to combine a certain level of understanding of the relevant sector with a sufficient knowledge on the design and processing of the questionnaires. Prior to a final finding of violation, competition authorities provide the parties with a written statement of the charges, the so-called statement of objections. It sets out the alleged anti-competitive infringements and states the evidence on which the authority relies. Due process 
requires transparency in procedural fair treatment. The key principles for due process are enshrined in an OECD recommendation on transparency and procedural fairness in competition law enforcement that was adopted by the OECD ministers in 2022. These key principles are seven. First, the law and policy framework for competition law enforcement should be clear and public. Second, enforcement should be independent, that is, free from political interference or pressure. And third, enforcement should not discriminate based on nationality or ownership. Fourth, competition law enforcement should be timely and wrap up in a reasonable time, taking of course into consideration the complexities of each case. Principle 5 details the steps that competition authorities should take to give parties opportunities for an adequate defence before a final decision is taken, including access to file and the opportunity to be represented by a lawyer of their choice. 6. Competition information should not be disclosed unlawfully and there should be rules and policies regarding the handling of privileged information exchanged between clients and their lawyers. And 7. And final, competition law enforcement decisions should be open to challenge before an independent court or tribunal. The OECD calculated that between 2015 and 2020, competition authorities in the world imposed more than 48 billion euros of fines. It is a huge sum, an average of 22 million euros every day for six years. The purpose of sanctions is to punish infringers and at the same time prevent future violations by all market participants. Deterrence requires a reasonable probability that the unlawful conduct will be detected and hence good detection skills by competition authorities and heavy fines that should exceed the profits expected from the competition breach. In some cases, sanctions against firms can be complemented with sanctions against individuals, like uh, disqualification from holding certain positions, for example, as company directors. In criminal regimes, the strongest individual sanction is imprisonment. The steps illustrated above are like necessary ingredients in a recipe for a good meal. Each of them contributes to the adoption of a solid decision based on compelling evidence and a fair and transparent procedure. That said, as in cuisine, the outcome will depend on the skills of the chef, or in our case, on the abilities, dedication and intuition of the competition authority. And a bit of good luck.